Um, so uh, this one should be fairly straightforward, I guess. Uh, which of the following substances exhibits hydrogen bonding? And for those that do, draw two molecules of the substances with hydrogen bonds between them, clearly indicating the acceptor and donator portions of that hydrogen bond. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? So, um, I guess the first thing I would like you guys probably to do with these is draw the Lewis structure so you can see whether they hydrogen bond or not. But um, hopefully you guys can tell me um, through just looking up there whether they, are, they have the ability to hydrogen bond, right? So does the top one even have the ability to hydrogen bond? No. No. Why not? Does it have nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine? Yeah, it doesn't have nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in it. So even though it's got these hydrogens in it, right, it can't hydrogen bond, okay? But I think it's still beneficial to draw the Lewis structure, okay? So let's draw the Lewis structure um, of this molecule here, ethane. So hopefully you guys all drew it like this. And by now I don't think I need to draw it from its constituent element. So hopefully you guys can see, especially now, definitely there's no hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, or hydrogen. Is everybody okay with that? So let's just kind of delete this from the system and just look at these two. So do these ones potentially have the ability to hydrogen bond? Yes. Yes, right? Already we can say yes because we see that they have both hydrogen and oxygen in them or hydrogen and nitrogen in this. Okay? So it looks like this one's pretty much already showing us the Lewis structure, right? Let's Let's draw the Lewis structure of this one over here. So CH3OH, methanol. Okay, so when it's written like this, it's kind of showing you which atoms are bonded to which atoms. Okay? So here we're saying that that carbon is bonded to those three hydrogens. Is everybody okay with that? And also that carbon is bonded to that oxygen. So let's draw that. This group here is called a methyl group. CH3 group is called a methyl group. Methyl. In fact, this molecule is known as methanol. Because of that. But we said that carbon is bonded to that oxygen there. And that oxygen, of course, is bonded to that hydrogen. Is there anything missing on this Lewis structure? The lone pairs, right? So lone pairs on oxygen, there's two of them. Okay, remember this is just the Lewis structure, so this doesn't tell us any structural information except for where the atoms are bonded to each other. But um, we see that there's this oxygen-hydrogen bond. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. So when we see that, we should realize automatically that this thing is going to be able to hydrogen bond, okay? And so, it wants us to draw a hydrogen bond to another member of the same species, okay? So let's do that. So hopefully you guys have already done this. So again, this is just another way to draw methanol. He's kind of like on his side. And I'm going to draw, remember those intermolecular forces we draw as kind of dashed lines? Does everybody remember that? So this itself would be a hydrogen bond. And it wants us to label the hydrogen bond acceptors and donators, okay? So, in this hydrogen bond, if we have a hydrogen bond, there has to be an acceptor and a donator, okay? So what portion is the acceptor of the hydrogen bond? The oxygen lone pair, okay? So the oxygen lone pair is the acceptor. So in fact, 
right? This lone pair can make a hydrogen bond with another one, okay? So we'll just say there's another one down here, like that, and we'll just label this acceptor for the hydrogen bond that we're directly showing here, this is the actual acceptor. This over here, of course, is the donor of the hydrogen bond. And of course, you've got these two more acceptors here. So if I asked you for um, the number of acceptors and the number of donors in this molecule, what, you, what would you say? So let's say, so hydrogen bond acceptors, how many are there in that bubble? Two in one molecule, that's all I'm looking for, okay. how many are in one molecule? Okay, two. Why? Because there's only two um, oxygen lone pairs where that oxygen, um, well, it doesn't have to be bonded to the hydrogen, but there's two oxygen lone pairs, one of those really electronegative that. so two. And how many donors do I have in one molecule? One. Just one, right? Why only one? Because there's only one hydrogen bonded to one of those electronegative. Okay, so those electronegative atoms, they have those lone pairs and they'll always be hydrogen bond acceptors no matter what they're bonded to, okay? So, in other words, when we look at this structure, hopefully you can see that there's a portion that has hydrogen bond acceptors but not donors, okay? So let's draw this one out from its kind of condensed structure to its big Lewis structure. And again, this is just the Lewis structure. Oh, I gave away the lone pairs. Like that. Okay. So, instead of drawing another one of these molecules and drawing a bunch of hydrogen bonds, why don't we just figure out how many donors and how many acceptors this molecule has? <coughs> so, who wants to tell me how many acceptors does this thing have? Three. Why? Three lone pairs on those particular electronegative atoms that we're looking at, right? So the acceptors would be here, here, and here. And what about donors? How many hydrogen bond donors does this have? Two, Two right? Why not? Why didn't you say these one? Well, I'm a, I'm assuming that you're yeah. saying these two hydrogens, right? Why are one these three be? Because they're not attached to one of those electrons. So, what have we noticed about this molecule, right? There's an atom that has acceptors but not donors. Okay, this top oxygen up there, okay, the, what we say is the carbonyl oxygen. This thing here is a carbonyl, a C double bond O, where it's singly bonded to two of them. You'll learn more about that in organic. Any questions on that one? What exactly pulls a hydrogen bond together? Is it like an electron? Well, is it's the, one of those Van der Waals forces, like those intermolecular forces. Yeah, so there's that partial positive. It's the difference of electronegativity, you know? So those, those really electronegative atoms really want those electrons, you know? And hydrogen, you know, likes to give, give them up. And in fact, what you'll uh, see, I mean, you know about <laughs> strong acids, you know? You know about strong acids. Those are hydrogen atoms, uh, those are, molecules where, that have a hydrogen atom attached to a really electronegative atom that can form a polyatomic ion that's more stable than the actual uh, un, uncharged structure, okay? 
So it would prefer to have that hydrogen missing than have it there. Okay, so that's what makes a strong acid, is that you have this, what we call conjugate base, that's actually more stable than the acid itself. The conjugate base being the polyatomic ion that's formed um, from the loss of the hydrogen atom. Okay, I'll show you, uh, show you right now. <coughs> 